Hello and welcome to English Learning Hub. English Listening Test. Designed for B1 learners. This test consists of 30 questions which are divided into six parts. I will give you a short instruction at the beginning of each part. Before we get started, take a pen and paper so you can take notes while listening. Are you ready? Let's get started. Part 1. Listen to Karen talking about her phobia and take notes. On the show today, we're talking about phobias. My first guest is Karen, who is on the line now. Good evening, Karen. Good evening. Now Karen, you have a fear of open or public spaces. That's right, yes. So, how long have you suffered from agoraphobia? Well, since I was a child, really. I've suffered this fear for about 20 years. Do you know what caused it? No, I don't know what caused it, actually. I've always been scared of going to places where there are a lot of people. For example, I try not to go into shopping malls, or buses, or airplanes, or anywhere where there are crowds of people. I just start to sweat and feel panic when I go into these places. Okay, how does your phobia affect your life? Not surprisingly, it has a severe effect on everything I do. I'm frightened of being alone, and I only feel safe at home. So, I can't go out to work. And I need to be with someone if I leave the house. I understand. But you have recently completed a course in graphic design. Is that correct? How did you do that? Yes, that's right. I've been a graphic designer for five months now. I studied the course online, and I do all my work from home. I don't have to leave the house at all, so it's the perfect job for me. That's great news. One last question. Have you had any treatment for your agoraphobia? Well, I have therapy once a week to help me overcome my phobia, and I'm now taking a new drug every day. I hope this drug will be more effective than the last one. Okay, good luck with everything Karen, and thanks for talking to us this evening. Choose the correct option. Part 2. Listen to 5 conversations and take notes. How long have you been a musician, Luis? Since I was 15 years old. My mom bought me my first guitar for my 15th birthday. We formed the band in 2005, when I was 20, and we've played together since then. Do you think you'll be famous one day? If we were successful, I'd be really happy. But I don't know. We'll see. I see you're in dental school in Philadelphia now, Martha. How long have you been there? For four years. This year is my last year there, and then I'm starting work as a dentist. Isn't your dad a dentist too? Yes, I'm following in his footsteps. How long have you been afraid of spiders, James? I've been terrified of them since I was five years old, 15 years ago. Well, what happened? 
I woke up with a huge spider on my face. It was horrible. Vanessa, have you been married long? Yes, we've been married for 10 years. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, I don't tell many people. We're getting divorced next year. Oh, I see. How long have you been injured? Since last Friday. I injured my foot in the game. When will you be able to play again? I'm not sure. Maybe next Saturday. Choose the correct option. Part 3. Listen to the conversation and complete the sentences with one or two words. Wouldn't it be great if we all had beautiful, big homes with high ceilings and wood floors? Well, today we're going to look at ways you can make your home look spacious, even if you live in a tiny, one-bedroom apartment. Jennifer White's job is to advise people on how to do just this, and she's here to give us some tips. Hello, Jennifer. Hello. So Jennifer, how can we make our small rooms look bigger? Well, what I always say to my clients is that if you follow a few simple design rules, even the smallest apartment can feel spacious. If you told me your home's too small, the first thing I would probably say is, throw away things you don't need. Yes, sensible advice, and how important is light? Very important. But there are ways you can make even a basement apartment look lighter. For example, as soon as you hang two mirrors opposite each other you'll instantly make a room look bigger and brighter. And should we paint everything white? Funnily enough, it's not necessarily a good idea to use white. Using a darker color on the walls actually makes the corners of the room disappear. And interestingly, you can make a low ceiling look higher when you paint it a bright color. That's surprising! And I guess furniture shouldn't be too big? Well, no, if I were you, I would choose a few attractive larger items as this will make a room feel more spacious than having lots of little things. Fantastic advice, thank you. Any final tips? Well, remember that less is more. Don't use lots of different colors and designs together unless you want the room to look really crowded. And plain wood is useful, it goes well with all colors. Thank you Jennifer. Lots of great ideas to think about. And coming up, have you ever wondered? Choose the correct answer.
Part 4. Listen to 5 conversations and take notes. Where did you grow up, Robert? Well, I lived by the ocean on Cape Cod in Massachusetts until I was 11 and went to a small town elementary school. But then we moved to Boston, which is a pretty big city. I went to a large public high school on the outskirts of the city. So that was quite a big change. Yes, I found it very difficult until I made some friends. But as a teenager, I enjoyed living in a bigger place. If you did something bad at your school Kevin, were you punished? There was no physical punishment, but they were very strict about cheating. A boy at my school was expelled after he cheated on his exams. What about you? Oh, I never got into trouble. I was one of the quiet ones. I just studied and always did my homework. Pretty boring, really. If you could live anywhere you liked, Ted, where would you choose? Oh, I'd like to live in a top-floor apartment with a balcony overlooking Central Park in New York. How about you? Hmm, that might appeal to me if I were 20 years younger. But now, I'd love to live in a cozy cottage in the countryside with an open fire. I'd like a little garden gate with a path leading to my front door. How old is the house? Well, it's nearly 100 years old, but as you can see, the roof has been recently replaced and the chimney too. Let's go inside. Oh, I like the living room. Yes, the old stone fireplace is original, and if you decided you wanted to buy it, the curtains and carpets would be included. And this is the kitchen, very modern, with a new stove. Shall I show you upstairs? Amy, if I wanted to be an architect, what subjects would you advise me to study at school? Well, I wouldn't encourage anyone to study architecture unless they were good at math. So math, definitely. Physics is also important. But what about art? It helps if you enjoy art and design, or even photography, but these days, architects don't do much real drawing. They use sophisticated computer programs, so it's helpful to have good computer skills. You look sharp, Betty. Thanks, I just had a job interview at Kelly's. The new department store? Yes. What was the interview for? The manager in ladies fashion. You'd be great at that. How did it go? I don't think I got the job. Why? What happened? Well, it started okay. The interviewer asked me why I wanted to work there, and I said I was interested in fashion and told him I was looking for a job with more responsibility and the chance of promotion. Sounds good. He asked me what qualifications I had, and I told him I'd studied design at an art college. He also wanted to know if I'd had any relevant previous experience, and I said I'd worked in a bookstore for two years, so I understood sales and was good at dealing with customers. Okay, then what happened? 
He wanted to know why I'd left my previous job, so I told him I'd been laid off. But that wasn't your fault. No, I explained that bookstores hadn't been doing well recently because of the increase in online shopping. He asked me how I would make sure the same thing didn't happen at Kelly's. I replied that I thought clothes shopping was different because customers preferred to see the clothes. And I said they liked to try things on to make sure that they fit well. That sounds like a good response. So what went wrong? Well, he asked me where I'd bought the clothes I was wearing, and I admitted that I'd gotten my shoes on eBay, I'd bought my suit online too, and that I'd made my shirt myself. He didn't look very pleased. I think he was worried that I wasn't really serious about the job I'd applied for. Do you want to go out to get some lunch? Sorry, I brought a boring egg sandwich and low-fat yogurt today. Tomorrow? I'm afraid I'm meeting my sister tomorrow. What about Friday? Yes, Friday's good. We could try that new cafe down the road. I hear the food's great. Can I take your order? Yes, I'll have the chicken, please. It comes with roasted potatoes. Do you want any other vegetables with it, too? Um, could I have some cabbage and peas, please? Yes, of course. And what would you like to drink with that? Excuse me, do you have any canned tuna? Yes, it's just over there on the left, next to the salmon. Okay, thank you. And where can I find the eggs? Do you want to follow me? I'll show you. Thanks. Dinner will be ready in half an hour. We're having your favorite, pasta with eggplant. But I'm really hungry now. Well, have an apple then. An apple? That won't help. Can I have a cookie? Oh, okay. But don't eat more than one. How about some tasty raspberries? You won't find a better price. Um, do you have any grapes? Yes, we do ma'am. Would you like red or green? They're both very sweet. Can I have half a pound of the red ones, please? There you go.